Hey guys, um, sorry for more doom and gloom today, uh, but I want to talk mainly about the banks, um, and I think, uh, you know, there was a provision when the banks got a loan, when the banks got bailed out during COVID, there was a there was a line in there saying that they don't have to you know normally they had to keep 10 percent or whatever uh like in cash or in a vault or somewhere and then um at some point i thought they increased it to maybe 20 percent but um I was looking at this guy, I have no idea who he is, first time I've seen him, but, um, I mean, this is, this is a little bit of old news, but, um, you know, the iconic 1.4 million square feet AT&T Tower in St. Louis, um, vacant building sold in 2022 for a shocking four million dollars or less than three dollars per square foot and uh this i, I don't know what they paid for but it was obviously probably a a huge discount but this one uh Blackstone sells New York office building and a shocking $420 million haircut uh, sold for $185 and it was bought in 2014 for $605 million. So, and not only that, they rented, they spent millions of dollars renovating it and they ended up getting a third of their money back. You know, 10 years later, they, they, they only got a third of their money back. So for all these idiots who think that real estate can only go up, 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 you, uh, and this is, this isn't a prime location. You know, this ain't, uh, you know, the middle of nowhere. There's another one here. Let me see. Um, uh, Skokie, Illinois. They took a 88% discount. 88% haircut. I think the other one was a 90% haircut. Um, purchased for 64 million in 2007. Sold for 7.9 million or $22 a square foot. Um, So, the point this guy's making is who do you think's losing this money? Who's taking an 80 or 90% discount? The banks are. 
the banks are losing 80 or 90 percent. They're taking 80 to 90 percent discounts. First Republic goes under. Um, and this this wasn't you know a mom and pop. They had uh, four billion in deposits. The assets worth six billion. Um, <laughs> but with uh, this first line here, as announced on March fifteenth, two thousand twenty, the board reduced reserve requirements ratios to zero percent effect of March 26, I mean, let, let that sink in a little bit, guys. Let, let this sink in a little bit. The banks are not, they're not required to keep 10% of your money in the bank like they used to be or 20% or 100%. And they're, they're zero. They need to keep zero percent. But I know the deposits are down like 30% or so this year. But the problem with the banks is the loans that they got, they're like coming due soon. And, you know, Buffett, you know, loves banks. And, and the reason Buffett loves banks is, well, he loves Bank of America. They were doing, he had 10, he was getting 10% preferred shares, plus they were buying back at least 10% of their stock every year. So he was getting basically a 20% return on Bank of America. And, and his theory, and I want to, you know, argue against Buffett, but his theory is, you know, here banks were making money, tons of money when interest rates were low. 
So now when interest rates are high, in theory, banks should be killing it. If banks were killing it when interest rates are low, when interest rates rise, the banks should be killing it because um, they're, you know, you know, if they gave you a credit card, they're charging 20 or 30 percent interest on your credit card. Every time you go to the ATM, they're charging you two, three bucks to get, you know, to get it out. Um, if you get a late payment, you get a fee for that, a fee for this, fee for that. Um, but ideally, they should have they should have made they should be making money in this environment. But the problem is when they uh, they mainly had bought a lot of U.S. securities and the U.S. securities got killed, um, and they lost a lot of money on that. But also they they're taking eighty and ninety percent haircuts on real estate. And uh, rich people, even if they have the money, a lot of times they'll rather go to the bank and spend the bank's money instead of risk their own money. They'd rather go use the bank's money and risk their money uh, instead of their own. Banks also invest in bonds and the debt securities, which lose value when interest rates rise. And just think of a little simple example that I've talked about before is, let's say that the bank, say you're the bank and, and you, you loaned someone a 30 year mortgage at 2% and now they got seven and eight percent mortgages. Well, if you're the bank, you would rather have have the seven or eight percent, uh, or six or seven or whatever, thirty year mortgage rather than the two, because of the seven percent mortgage. You know, you're basically uh, before you pay your house off, you're basically buying the bank uh, a house and a half or a house and a luxury car before you pay your house off. The majority of U.S. banks posted declines in their deposit balance year over year, which almost 30% Uh, almost 30% of the 871 billion industry decline uh, to the big four. <coughs> so you can see how it, the deposits of you know, going up, 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 and then here now we're starting to, now we're starting to go down. But yeah, this one they took a 90% discount. They paid 62 million in 
the commercial real estate debt market is poised for a record breaking event this year as 920 billion in loans are set to mature with an additional 1 trillion anticipated to come due between 2025 and 26. These maturities represent 42% of the sector's total outstanding debt. So this is the size of the um, real estate market, commercial real estate market. Twenty trillion. That's basically the a year's U.S. GDP. But to me, the U.S. GDP is not accurate because people are using debt to they're using money they don't have so our GDP numbers are up but they're really not because they're funding it with debt Bank ships 60,000 jobs. Yeah, a month, month and a half later, we're already at our first failure. So it's getting positioned for this as, a, as everything is just perfectly primed for a disaster for regional banks. And it's, a, it's an unfortunate reality, but it's a reality that they all knew was coming. Janet Yellen said that this is coming. I mean, there's even a meeting where they were talking about bank runs. The Fed, like, they know that if you look at Silicon Valley Bank with the power of social media, they're in $61.5 billion that has to get paid back in the next 10 months.
All right, so that's the last one. Look at this. This guy's trying to withdraw. I don't know what country this is. I don't know if this is in um, Europe or what. But he's the the title says customer arrested for demanding cash from bank. He's not even trying to withdraw a lot of money. He's trying to withdraw three thousand dollars. And and I guess the guy got arrested. Listen to what this lady says here. No, the problem is they don't want to be controlled. Uh, they don't want to. Uh... Yeah, but you know what? You know what? Now we have in Europe this threshold above 1,000 euros, you cannot pay cash. If you do, you're on the gray market. So you take your risk. You get caught, you are fined, or you go in jail. So if you, if you use cash in Europe over $1,000, you get a little ding, uh, and they call it the gray market, and, and you could either be arrested or to go to, go to, go to jail. Um, April 17th, so this was uh, 12 days ago. Headline, banks are being rocked again as real estate loss, uh, losses mount. U.S. Bank Corp. plunged 38% after a report of loss of $252 million in the last quarter. We saw just one of those little properties um, was sold at like a $500 million loss. But I'm seriously... Um, I don't know. I hate to do it. I really do hate to short because it destroys businesses. It destroys people's lives. They they get laid off. But you know. But I might make some money. But um, so you're making money, but you're kind of doing it in a sleazy way, as Tupac might say. So this is like a 2x uh, bull, and this is like a 2x bear, and this is like a, a 1x bear. Um, but I just wanted to show this. Uh, this is one I just happened to look up and find. A real estate bull and bear. And, if you don't know, a bull is thinking that things are going to go up and a bear is pessimistic and things, things are going to go down. And, uh, but look at the 30 day thing of, of this. You got it cross, crossing over here. And then the, um, 
the bears, good lord, and the bulls, the bulls just got killed. And maybe I'm saying it wrong, but um, I mean, look at look at this price action though. Look at this change. Um, I mean, this is just the last ten days from uh, April seventeenth. These are huge. These are huge swings, guys. And um, and maybe I'm looking at it wrong or something. But look at the, the ninety day chart. But uh, some something's happening. in the last few days so <clears throat> I don't know maybe you can uh, short the banks maybe you can short uh, real estate um, and try to make some money that way but um, When that one guy says 500 or so banks going to go under in the next two years, and and you know Europe ain't even allow you to draw a thousand, three thousand dollars. That's crazy to me.